you're now better Forget about your past Love that brother No one is ever last We're in this together We're on the I'm Ari And I sing in Earth to Clark In my eyes No matter how I live I'm Adam And I play guitar and rap My name is Mark I play drums in Earth to Clark My name is Blaine And I play bass Emerging out of the Beloit, Wisconsin music scene, Eartha Clark began as a solo project of songwriter, rapper, and guitarist Adam Gazir, but soon evolved into a full-fledged band with a very clear mission. I knew that my purpose was to serve people and to help people through my words and through my lyrics and through my music. So that's been kind of just always on the forefront. I know the message um, that is important for me is the message for what we spread and what we talk about. I just want to talk about real things that happen, you know? Real life, real connections that are made. Adam began writing poetry at a young age, which would later evolve into the music of Earth to Clark. I picked up an acoustic guitar and started to just teach myself how to play acoustic. And that was like about 16 or 17 years old. So that just acted in a way where I could, I could put my lyrics to the guitar. The focus of Adam's lyrics from the very beginning was the transformation from struggle and hardship into inspiration and empowerment. Like it's my therapy, it's my meditation as well. Like it helps me also because sometimes I feel like I'm not writing this music. Like it's almost just coming through me. The first member to join Adam was drummer Mark Atkinson. I was out at the White Bear that night trying to sell tickets for like the next weekend. We were playing a show, that show. And I came up to Mark and Mark was uh, instantly just connected with him. I was just gonna say, I don't remember when it was because after that night we just like just hung out like all the time, like every day. Yeah. <laughs> the rest is history. Shortly after meeting Adam at a local open mic night, vocalist Ariana would soon not only become his girlfriend, but eventually a key member of his band as well. He was playing one of the songs off of our album, The Giving Tree. It's called The Lifeline. And I had just gone through um, a pretty bad situation, uh, dealt with like a lot of abuse. And the things that he said in that song, I hadn't really heard anybody else um, talk about in music. I was also in like a pretty rough spot. And then, yeah, she, appeared in my life and uh, everything changed since then. So the idea to have me in Eartha Clark was not my idea. It was my idea for sure and she, she was like I'm not joining your band I don't want to be like the girlfriend that joins my boyfriend's band. I don't know our voices just sounded so good together and then we we had this festival that the boys were gonna play. And uh the only way that she could get in for free is if she was part of the band. I was like bro a broke 24 year old, you know? So I was like, oh, I want to go to this festival with my boyfriend. I was like, okay. So I learned like four or five songs. And then ever since then, she was like part of the band. <laughs> As a few members of Earth to Clark came and went, bassist and longtime fan Blaine Weber was the last member to join the band. I mean, I've been around like the whole time listening to music. Yeah. And they were like, hey, you should learn bass after I watched them go through a couple bass players. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. We were just waiting for that to happen, I feel like. Yeah, he was already, to be. He was already part of it. Not only are the members of Earth to Clark friends, but many of them were once roommates as well. The manor happened because oh. we were like all either half homeless or homeless. <laughs> it was one of those things, like I was saying before, was when we hung out, it, it was seamless. We, it was weird to commit to living with someone after only knowing them for a shorter period of time. But with anything, there's balance, and like you got to find like there's ups and downs and there's struggles. So we have our beautiful moments where we're on stage and we catch each other's eye, and it's just like it's in that moment, it's beautiful, you yeah. know. But then there's the times behind the scenes too, where it's like you live together and like you have children together, you have to tour together and have to add like so much time and schedules that. together and like you know. So it's like there's also that struggle to be like roommates, friends, and in a working band with someone. There was there was a lot of different facets to the relationship. Yeah, for and sure. so there, it was it. I don't know. It just taught me more about human interaction, boundaries, and where to, you know, 
how it all works. Want to kill him all the time? I can't, I can't even. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's well, no, it actually is like that. <laughs> the chemistry between the band members is undeniable, and as a result, has helped create their unique sound. We definitely blend a lot of different sounds, as in like reggae, rock, hip hop, uh, funk, a little bit of blues. I would say. <sighs> It's definitely hip, like hip hop and like reggae, rock, funk. Funk to safe party, jolly rock, reggae with hip hop. What do you mean? That's exactly what we play. Despite creating music that is both unique and powerful, Earth to Clark still had to work their way up to where they are today. I remember going to shows and playing to like two people. Like, and that honestly, like we had some of the most fun that we've ever had at those shows. And we've just had like so many parties at the Clark Manor um, with just hundreds of people and just like pictures flying off the walls and like just windows shaking and people spinning fire in our backyard. Before long, the house parties and tiny shows gave way to larger venues with much bigger crowds. You know, open for the Whalers at, at the rave, that was super cool. Because that was, you know, there was places when I moved up here, I, you know, would venture off on my own and go to shows at places in Madison or Milwaukee at the rave and stuff. And then, you know, a couple years later, coming back to those places and playing shows was super cool. Let's see. <laughs> we Let's played start. a lot of festivals. Jamming Fest. Midwest Sun Splash. Fall Up and Spring Up. Ragged Roots. The darkening of the sun. Oh, that, that was, was really cool. cool. Portal was an epic experience. I remember that one. Shangri-La. Shangri-La. Multiple Shangri-Las. Bye bye. Tribal vision. Yeah. So a lot of people branched off and trying to do, you know, micro festivals and on their own property and things like that. So we played a lot of smaller, local, homegrown, you know, festivals. We went from like probably 50 people party to like a three to 400 people festival. Um, it's just uh, a good thing, like important to us for our community and like get our community out there to enjoy this type of vibe that you might not get like in the city and like you might not get from like a, your local rock concert or like going to your local venue or something like that. Like it's a whole experience that we've created. But their success didn't necessarily come easily or without their fair share of struggles. You know, growing up in Janesville, I often was by myself, and during those times, they were pretty dark. Um, I ended up with, you know, mixed up in drug scenes and just in places that I shouldn't have been. I we went through, like, a lot of struggles and uh, a lot of poverty, and, like, it wasn't always... It wasn't always easy, but there was so much beauty in it that um, inspired me to like to create um, the music that we create now. Despite the hardships they have faced, Earth to Clark refuses to give up on their music and the message it carries. It's so easy to be like, well, I have a kid, so like I can't go play music, you know. But like, you can make it happen. Like, there's ways to get around it to where you don't have to give up doing what you love, you know? You just have to put in the extra work and be willing to go like that extra mile to continue to do what you love. Do don't give up, because no matter what, you're gonna have those highs and lows. And so if you're sitting at like the nine to five and like wondering what your life would be like if you were chasing your dream instead, you know, like just you're still gonna have your highs and lows while sitting in your at your office. You know, and it's just gonna suck worse because you're also not doing what you love.